Hello, grade 12s. In this lesson, we are going to learn about the conservation of energy. By now, you should be familiar with the concept of work and how it relates to kinetic energy, as well as the work energy theorem. Let's get to Nico to explain conservation of mechanical energy to us. We are now going to go to the section that talks about mechanical energy. What is mechanical energy? Okay. Now, mechanical energy is the sum. Mm, interesting. The sum is a mathematical term. What does sum mean? Okay, this is an answer you get from addition. So when you add things up, the answer you get is called a sum. So mechanical energy is the sum of gravitational potential energy and kinetic energy energy of an object. Now, objects moving can be gaining, like we had an example earlier on, can be gaining uh, uh, potential energy as they move with, uh, I mean, on the vertical uh, direction. And in the process, obviously, some kinetic energy as well, because these objects are moving. And here we come to a type of energy that says, this is the sum, if we add kinetic energy to potential energy, we end up with this type of energy. We call it mechanical energy. So this mechanical energy, we will use Me to symbolize it, will be given by Ep plus Ek. Or remember that Ep can also be represented by U, and Ek can also be represented by K. So we can say as well that Me equals to U plus K potential, gravitational potential energy plus the kinetic energy of the object. Okay, so that is mechanical energy. Now, what is it about mechanical energy that we need to know? It is the, because this is some kind of special type of energy. It is the sum of kinetic and potential energy, and this mechanical energy, okay, in a closed system, okay, is always conserved. Now, this is something very interesting. The mechanical energy in a closed system is conserved. What do we mean by a closed system and what do we mean by mechanical energy being conserved? Closed system means that we don't have any external force, okay, apart what is in the, in the system. So nothing externally comes to play. And when we say it is conserved, we are actually saying it remains the same. Remains the same. It doesn't get less. It doesn't get bigger than what we started with. It is conserved. So we can say that this mechanical energy, which is given by the sum of potential energy and kinetic energy in a closed system, will always be equal to a constant, a constant, something not changing. Remember that there is always a relationship between work and energy. It is therefore important to realize that forces play a vital role in the conservation of energy. When mechanical energy is conserved, conservative forces are present. But when mechanical energy is not conserved, then non-conservative forces are present. A conservative force is defined as a force for which the work done in moving an object between two points is independent of the path taken. The following are examples of conservative forces gravitational force, magnetic force, electric force, and any other force which leads to positive work. On the other hand, a non-conservative force is defined as a force for which the work done in moving an object between two points depends on the path taken. The following are the examples of non-conservative forces, frictional force, air resistance, tension, normal force, and so on. When we think back to what we learned about positive work and negative work, we can realize that conservative forces do positive work and non-conservative forces do negative work.
Remember that mechanical energy and network are related. Network and mechanical energy can substitute each other in the same situation and context. Let us look at the following situation. A 1 kilogram ball is dropped from a height of 15 meters and reaches the ground with a velocity of 2 meters per second. What is the work done by the air resistance? Let us remember that air resistance is a non-conservative force and it does negative work. The given formula to calculate the work done by a non-conservative force is Work done by a non-conservative force is equal to change in kinetic energy plus the change in potential energy. Before we solve this problem, let us see how this formula was derived. We take the principle of conservation of mechanical energy and we add the work done by the non-conservative force to the initial mechanical energy, which is mechanical energy at the top before the ball was dropped from 15 meters up. This is because mechanical energy is not conserved when there are non-conservative forces, but the energy of the system must be conserved. By resolving this equation, the final formula obtained is work done by a non-conservative force is equal to a change in kinetic energy plus the change in potential energy. Now let's complete the example. We have been given the height of 15 meters, the gravitational acceleration of 9,8 meters per second square, the initial velocity as zero, and the final velocity as two meters per second. By substituting correctly into the formula, the correct answer is 145 joules. We must not leave the answers in a negative form. Work is a scalar and therefore no direction is given. This brings us to the end of our lesson on conservation of energy grade 12s. You'll also find more information about work at www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Remember to try some of the questions in the task video. Goodbye.